Hi, I'm Matt Brill from the East Sussex Careers Hub. It's November 2021 and I'm going to give you some updates in terms of local labour market information or LMI as I'll be referring to it. So perhaps you know what you want to do as a career, perhaps you don't, but do you know where you can do it and if there are vacancies available? Would you have to move out of East Sussex? Where are the growth industries and jobs? Labour market information can help you find out the answers to all of these questions. So today I'm going to help you learn more about what is happening in the local labour market. In terms of objectives from the session, we're going to look at uh, understanding what LMI is and how to access and use it. Recognise that the six priority sectors for East Sussex, understand the key future economic trends, where to go to identify and develop your skills and to identify where online resources are available. A couple of it, a couple of definitions for labour market information. <clears throat> so LMI can provide us with insights into different jobs and opportunities, telling us what's available now or predicted to be in the future. An alternative definition provided, uh, LMI is the name for facts and figures about jobs and employment. The information is used to give an overall picture of the past, present and future of work. The labour market is the term used to describe the amount of people working and looking for work and the amount of jobs available. So how can LMI help you? It can help you ascertain what a job involves on a day to day basis, which jobs and sectors are growing and declining, what qualifications and skills you might need to carry out and move into a job, how much you might potentially earn, how your interests and skills are relevant to particular job sectors, and what jobs specifically are there available in your region? So using LMI. So first and foremost, it's all about research. So we'll cover this later in the presentation, but research in itself is an in-demand skill for employers. So this is a great opportunity now to get used to using and develop, developing it now, both in your personal life and your working life in future. It's about being open minded. So it's only when you delve into stats and opportunities that might be out there that you actually realise what could be uh, available to you. So being open minded when you're carrying out your research into career pathways. So being informed, so using real facts and figures, which is what LMI is all about, and utilising opportunities to speak to the right people, uh, to, to find out people who are involved in the industry as well is very important. So networking, uh, and that can be a, a mixture of online in terms of digging out resources. It could be even joining online networking sessions with businesses uh, and also face to face. So utilising opportunities that you might have both in the school and college that you may be uh, studying in uh, to meet employers who may come in to speak to you and careers events and such like, uh, but also going out into the community. So doing some research uh, in terms of in addition to uh, LinkedIn online that I would definitely recommend you having an account for, certainly if you're coming up to making these decisions, uh, but also going out into employer workplaces that might be visits through your school or college or potentially off of your own back. So in terms of the East Sussex landscape, uh, definitely I think we've all felt the impact of COVID and Brexit as well that have both been uh, running in parallel. Uh, there's a couple of useful documents online that you may want to look at as well, uh, which are the Southeast Economic Recovery Strategy from March 21, Southeast Skills website through CELEP, Southeast uh, Local Enterprise Partnership is a great resource with lots of local LMI uh, and the equivalent over in the central Sussex region uh, up to kind of the Brighton and Hove central and west Sussex area uh, and moving northwards. Coast to Capital uh, have also put together some very useful labour market information, so definitely access those. So there has been an impact, so slightly for with COVID, construction, travel and tourism and hospitality have definitely been hit in negative ways, uh, whereas healthcare has uh, never been more in need than ever, as well as digital and IT with the increases in uh, home working and the necessary in infrastructures to support that have seen these industries continue to uh, thrive and increase. The impact of Brexit has certainly had its impact on construction and hospitality jobs as well, where we're seeing a real struggle uh, for employers recruiting some of these areas uh, and real skill shortages alongside it, which we'll go into later. 
So in addition to those useful websites, East Sussex County Council are also in the process of developing some more localised data, and this should be available uh, and rolled out around February of 2022. In terms of the East Sussex Economic Reco Recovery Plan, I'm just going to point to a few of these and how it affects you potentially in your career. So the Council has commissioned the Economic Recovery Plan, which had eight major ambitions to try and support the local economy. And this was published around mid-July, so in, uh, amongst the midst of COVID. Uh, much of this was based on feedback from local employers, so it's very relevant on a local level. It's about capitalising on digital con connectivity. So thinking about digital, creative and IT, there will be job opportunities in this area to support that. It's about attracting new inward investment and encouraging people that East Sussex is a place to both live and work in. And with that, we will see a real advance potentially in the nature of businesses and the, the scope and range of different sectors that, that might be based in East Sussex. A real kickstart is needed for the visitor economy. So where I mentioned hospitality has really taken that hit and travel and tourism, there's real investment going into to boost this and get it running again. So again, with that creates job opportunities. And there'll be a few slides later as well with the real surge in low carbon and alternative energy. So that's infrastructure needs to be supported. And again, this is a huge growing industry over the coming years. So in terms of East Sussex vacancies and a quick, fairly recent snapshot. So this shows uh, the vacancies stemming back from October 2020 uh, right the way through to September 21. And you can see particularly at the turn of the year, there is that increasingly upward trajectory in numbers of vacancies advertised. Uh, and this is data captured from the Adzuna website. So in September, there were just under 42,000 live vacancies, a slight drop from August, uh, but generally speaking, uh, a real upward curve is, is demonstrable there. Bear in mind as well, that won't include hidden jobs where uh, they're not necessarily advertised. So in terms of our six priority sectors for East Sussex, these haven't changed in the last few years. It's around creative and digital, construction, engineering, health and social care, the land based and visitor economies. So many of these areas will be very similar nationwide and there's also similar priorities in terms of Pan Sussex. We're going to break each of those down and do a little bit of analysis. So in terms of starting with creative, digital and media, there are two million employed in the digital creative sector. Two and a half thousand businesses and freelancers were present in East Sussex in 2019, and that's likely to have grown since. The sector has been really resilient in light of COVID, with borderless and boundaryless working, the growth of technology and home working, uh, the demand for tech jobs and skills has potentially never been higher. To give an idea, there were 42 percent more vacancies available in June 2020 than at the same point in 2019. And that's evidence of growth and employer demand for skills. And you can also see in the graph to the right how the number of tech jobs being advertised have grown in just three years, with the blue line at the top there showing the 2021 figures. Locally, there are 15,000 creative companies and over 50,000 employees in the southeast alone. Of the 50,000 employees in creative and digital in the southeast, a target is to increase that by 50% by 2030. An interesting makeup of the workforce is that around 47% are made up of freelancers and self-employed individuals. So that just shows that the key is around networking, which we spoke about earlier, using networks, uh, using LinkedIn to build your network uh, connections and searching by skills as well as job titles when you're actually on those job boards such as Indeed. There's a link on uh, below here from Tech Nation, which also has some really useful insights. And if you look at the link of the top 100 uh, companies to work for, half of the top 10 are creative and digital companies, and the other half will offer creative and tech roles. So some of the key popular roles to look ahead to uh, in the sector will be programmers and software developers, coders, game developers, and IT support initiatives, all growth areas. So moving on to construction. This industry has been hugely impacted by Brexit. So again, the graph here shows the drop in non-UK born construction workers with both London and the South East really heavily impacted uh, near the top there. But with that, there are still jobs that need to be carried out. 
So in construction, there are over half a million sector wide people employed, plus another near 270,000 self employed, those figures from June 2021. And just in that quarter from March 2021 to June 2021, there's been a 10% increase alone in self employed workers. 105,000 of those employees uh, are in the South East LEP area which is 38% above the national average for construction employees by area. So it's a huge sector down in the southeast. It's estimated that there'll be 217,000 employees across blue and white collar construction that will be needed within just the next four years by 2025. There's a gender imbalance with more females needed across the sector. But when you look at salary information, they are re really positive in terms of both comparing nationally and locally average, uh, average salaries. So there are skill shortages potentially of areas such as riggers, scaffolders and trades people such as brick layers and carpenters. And in terms of white collar shortages uh, in more office and support roles, uh, surveyors, quantity surveyors and project managers are a few of the roles that are certainly going to be in demand over the coming years. Moving on to engineering, so I think there's a general lack of understanding about engineering. If you look around you at home, college, buildings that you're sat in or just wandering the street outside, everything that you see goes back to an idea, a plan and a manufacturing process which encompasses engineering to some extent. So there's an annual demand for 124,000 engineers and it's estimated a shortfall of around 37 to 59,000 uh, on an annual basis. So engineering and manufacturing continues to be huge and it generates over 20% of the UK GBP of around 1.2 trillion pounds. In demand in general are traditional engineering, emerging technologies, robotics and data, cyber security and design services. So just to give an example, National Grid have said that they're going to need around 400,000 new energy workers to reach the UK government target of being net zero by 2050. On a local level, Rampion are expanding their wind farm along the East Sussex coast. And some research by the Faraday Institution forecasted that 83,000 new jobs are going to be needed nationwide for new UK battery gigafactories and battery material supply chains just by 2040 in the next 20 years. So in so many ways, this labour market is going to grow and evolve. Traditional roles in high demand could be things such as technical project, sorry, technical product manager, project engineers, robotic engineers and senior positions such as managing directors, production managers and manufacturing engineer managers. In terms of emerging technologies, so the emergence of revolutionary technology has created a wave of new roles, data analysts being a popular addition to many manufacturing and engineering businesses. They may have already been capture, capturing big data, and but now they want to collect, organise and interpret statistical information to further improve their productivity. We've also seen a growth in artificial intelligence or AI positions, which also topped a recent LinkedIn emerging jobs report. Robotics engineer was also featuring near the top in that report, a traditional role in high demand, but also an emerging role by the same title. And these new robotics engineers generally carry more of a focus on coding and software. Cyber security and ethical hackers are also emerging roles. In today's digital era, era all business sectors need to secure data, applications and communications networks. So this is a critical role, high in demand, but short in supply. And the knock on effect is that they command a high salary. Computer graphics artists are also an in demand role due to the advancements in things such as car infotainment. And then the need alongside that for design engineers also expected to rise. So things like the electrical charging points uh, that have forecasted uh, growth as part of the electric car industry uh, are going to be roles that uh, need to support that in future as well. So moving on to another sector, uh, health and social care. So the NHS are employing almost as many people as McDonald's are on a worldwide basis. So just take the numbers in and think about that. There are so many roles available that you may not be aware of. There are around 350 healthcare career choices. There are over 50 apprenticeship pathways, 
And a recent count through the REC, there are 112,000 adult social care vacancies advertised nationally, including 63,000 care workers. A concerning stat from the BBC is that just around 8% of care roles are going unfilled. So that's one in 12 vacancies uh, in care homes and those kind of institutions are not getting filled. There was also a recent count of 102,000 nursing vacancies through the REC. In terms of a local level, there are 720 Sussex based vacancies uh, when counted in October 2021, with 29,000 national jobs in October 2021 as well. There's some really useful website links below here. So you've got the Health Careers website where you can carry out a quiz to identify what roles could suit you. We have two local partnership trusts, East Sussex Health and Sussex Partnership, uh, with links to potentially look into work experience and volunteering, which are anticipating hopefully more face to face will be available come the spring of 2022. There's also a link uh, to the right hand side, the digital NHS website, and this will be publishing up to date vacancy statistics around the end of November 2021 and will provide further insult, further insight into roles. When you do a search on the uh, Institute for Apprenticeships websites, you'll find that there's over 50 apprenticeship standards and the skills for health list uh, list the clinical apprenticeships that are available too. And just as an example, just the graph there demonstrates the vacancy shortage that the, uh, the NHS targets have in place. They're looking to reduce the, the gap to around 5% of vacancies being unfilled, whereas at the moment they're around 11% average in between the two. And you can see uh, uh, increases in two relevant sectors, both in the nursing rate and the medical job rate. So land based and green jobs. This is another huge potentially growing sector. You only have to watch and read the news and can see on these graphics here too. So renewable energy, the environment and low carbon industries are at the forefront. Additionally, as of 2018, 7% of the East Sussex local economy was made up of land based businesses, which is above both the national and southeast average. So local examples, you've got New Haven, which is a future hub of green technology, as well as a really active New Haven enterprise zone. In terms of wine industry growth, We've got over 400 vineyards nationally and owing to the climate and rural nature of us in the South East and Sussex, we're very much a national capital for the industry. The South Downs National Park alone, which stretches across 87 miles from Hampshire to East Sussex, currently hosts 51 vineyards and 11 wineries. Recently, Vitascapes announced that only 0.4% of that available land was used currently for viticulture and a 30 further 30% of that land will be available. So this is huge growth and investment potential and looking forward could create as many as 800 full time jobs in the sector locally. The land sector is further growing, so top jobs in the future of this area include uh, things like countryside officer, nature conservationists, agronomists, so soil management and crop growth, and then think of everything around the technology as well to support this. So robotics, the processing machinery and landscaping equipment, which is all constantly evolving. So the impacts of climate change and government initiatives such as Net Zero are really driving this industry. And it's been said there could be as many as just under 1.2 million low carbon industry related jobs by 2050, with almost 14% of the national split of those being found in the southeast and compares favourably to the rest of the UK, as that graph there shows. On a local level, as I mentioned, we've got Ramp Rampion that are expanding their wind farms with more turbines having to be uh, produced along the coast. And the data shows here that the most important predicted green areas for East Sussex by 2030 include low carbon electricity, so wind power, solar PV, hydro, nuclear and CCS, low carbon heat, renewable heat networks and CHP, and energy efficiency, which has also been in the news. So around insulation, lighting, monitoring and control sections. So here's just a range of the, uh, the roles that uh, are and will continue to be available, sort of broadly grouped into those three sectors of environment, renewable energies and low carbon. 
So as I mentioned, research showed that there could be as many as 1.18 million jobs created by 2050, with 694,000 direct jobs anticipated just in the next 10 years by 2030, all contributing towards England's net zero transition. So in terms of low carbon jobs on a local level, so current forecasts that around 5,000 low carbon jobs will be required by 2030 and 8,142 required by 2050. And there's a breakdown of the jobs and how they would look specifically in East Sussex on those graphs. And last but not least of the priority sectors, we have visitor economy. So the County Council has named and targeted this sector in its recent economic recovery plan. So Brexit has massively impacted the industry with staff moving on, COVID causing closures and the financial strain caused by this, but that has seen now an increased demand for domestic breaks and now increasing UK and international travel. There are over 30 apprenticeship pathways relevant to visitor economy, broadly covering hospitality, travel, customer service and retail. And just at a local count last week in October 2021, there were 10 catering and hospitality apprenticeships uh, that were all available within easy commute of uh, the Lewis part of East Sussex. So in terms of some further stats, the economy is worth 8.6 billion to the southeast. In terms of the Southeast LEP region, it carried 172,000 employees in December 2020. And on a national level, some REC research in October 21 showed that there were 45,000 chef and retail vacancies alone being advertised for. There's been a 59% increase in accommodation and food service vacancies from January 2020, according to the National uh, Office of National Statistics. And we've also seen salary increases. So leisure and hospitality workers are getting their biggest raise in 20 years. Hospitality and leisure wages shot up by 2.8% from quarter one to quarter two of 2021. And this is the largest increase for the industry since 2001. So the most in demand roles currently include things such as head and sous chefs, cooks and waiting and customer service staff. So in terms of looking at skills in demand, so looking ahead at 2030, likely we're looking at interpersonal skills. So having social awareness, understanding of others and individuals you're working with and collaborating as well with those people. Cognitive skills would be in demand. So thinking with original originality, bringing creativity and ideas to the table and resolving problems. Broad based knowledge such as things around the areas of STEM, science, technology, engineering and maths foreign languages, the English language, history, philosophy, admin and management. And finally, goal setting, uh, things such as learning. So goal setting, the kind of things we're looking at by bringing in these research skills from LMI, asking the right questions, absorbing information whilst carrying out that research and feeding back and applying your knowledge to different contexts. A recent prospects website report also outlined seven skills that employers are likely to be seeking in future. Those are resilience, commercial awareness, communication, leadership and management, planning and research, adaptability, teamwork. And this is really focused the importance on gaining that work experience, whether that being formally through your school or college settings, going out to work uh, as early as you can and legally able to do, um, but also getting those uh, employer encounters um, sort of booked in and going to speak to and visit people who are working in these different sectors. So in terms of the next 15 years, uh, an interesting article that I found from September 2021 has outlined 15 um, potential, sorry, 21 potentially in demand jobs in the next 15 years. So you'll see here there is a real synergy with the uh, priority areas that we've been talked about. So you've got a number of roles across land based through engineering, through uh, construction, creative and digital and healthcare. Uh, as well as visitor economy. So if we, it's a fair reflection on a national basis as well as a local basis where our targets are. So in terms of labour market information resources, there's a number, uh, a plethora of useful uh, websites out there. We've got the Careers East Sussex LMI page through careersystsussex.co.uk 
Adsuna is great for current looking into vacancies across sectors as well as salary information amongst other details. LMI for all gives some really interesting job profiles that you can search for uh, and associated information alongside that, including things such as study routes, working hours, uh, salaries, uh, etc. Similarly, you've got the National Career Service, which offers an Explore Careers section with over 400 job profiles. You can also use that website to carry out a skills assessment, which can also uh, throw up some ideas on potential uh, industry sectors and jobs that suit your responses. So it's not a test, but it's just asking for uh, so a, a, an overview of your interests, your skills and what you're enjoying doing against what you're not possibly enjoying doing so much. We've also had two really recent events. So What Next Sussex 2021 and the Southeast LEP Careers event, both of which still have a, a load of online content. So just search for What Next Sussex or CELEP Careers event online and you'll be able to access lots of videos and useful material. So just to round up how to contact us and follow the East Sussex Careers Hub, uh, you can email us on our team email address at the top there. Uh, we've also got our website that I've mentioned with loads of help and advice and useful information in addition to labour market information links. Uh, we're also across social media on Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook and Instagram. Uh, you can also access our YouTube playlist, uh, which has a number of videos, including employer uh, journeys, which are really useful to see, as well as uh, LMI presentations such as this. And last but not least, we also have an online Padlet board uh, under Careers Hub East Sussex. Uh, you can access a range of uh, online webinars, resources and events uh, just by clicking in and following us there. That concludes the presentation. I hope that's given an, an overview of where we are at the moment in East Sussex here at the end of November 2021. And we'll look forward to producing another one uh, in the not too distant future. And remember to look out for our updated labour market information that will be available in February, March 2022. Thanks very much and thanks for watching.